Hi guys, Angie the Craft NATO, and I have here a big delivery from Amazon. And today is going to be a little bit different from diamond painting. So if you're not interested, well, actually there are some diamond painting accessories in here. But if you're not interested, that's fine. I completely understand. But if you want to stick around, I am going to be unboxing a couple of very new crafts to me. So I'm, yep, I'm craft natoing again, and I have ordered um, supplies for a couple of different brand new crafts. So let's get into it and see what I have ordered. And I have the two boxes. I'm not sure what are my diamond painting accessories and what are my new crafts. So we're just gonna, you're just gonna have to stay with me while I open both of them. Or not stay with me, that's fine. I understand if you don't want to. You won't hurt my feelings. There's definitely more, um, more diamond painting content coming, so don't worry about that. Oh, this one is not diamond painting or a new craft necessarily. Um, this is a big a bunch of yarn, um, Bernat softy chunky yarn. I'm going to uh, crochet a blanket for my son uh, using an eight millimeter hook, and I'm going to try doing a um, I'm going to try a new pattern um, from a YouTube video that I watched. It's like a cross hatch pattern you do like um, 12 stitches in 10 rows of 12 stitches of uh, post over and then 12 stitches of post under and then you do that for 12 or for 10 rows I'll show it to you once I get going on it um, the one thing that's in this box is something for the new craft so I'm going to leave that in there until we get the other box open and that's where the rest of the um, supplies are going to be for the new craft so I'm really excited about this. These are a couple of things. One of them is, I guess, is it's a new craft, but it's not anything that I've shown you guys before, but it is something that I have worked on a couple of projects like this, um, but it's still very new to me. Um, and I got a couple new, a couple new projects. So let's see what I ordered. Let's get into this big box and see what's in here. Well, first I'll pull out my diamond painting accessories. Uh, Amazon does again have Craftmates lockables on sale for $19 and some change, which is a good deal. They usually retail for $32.99. So I went ahead because I've got such big kits ordered that I want to work on. Um, I went ahead and got myself three more Craftmates lockables. So these are my very, very favorite. I know I've shown these to you before, but just in case you haven't watched any of my other videos, I'll go ahead and show you what they're like. Why not? You've got a minute. You can just work on what you're working on and listen to me ramble. We just got back from the dentist. Nate goes to a special pediatric dentist um, that's about an hour and 15 minutes from our house. So we just got back from that. Actually, it was longer than an hour and 15 minutes because of construction on the interstate, which was lovely. But these are Craftmates Lockable. They come in the, this nice binder. You can put on here, um, actually you could put like your sticker if it's a Diamond Art Club um, kit for to identify what the project is. Or I just write on there what the project is that's contained in each one of these binders. And then you have eight of these uh, rows of seven, which makes 56 slots. And these are really big. They hold, they hold two medium-sized Diamond Art Club bags. Um, you can get three large-sized Diamond Art Club bags into two of these. So I'm not sure exactly how many diamonds that is, but the way they work is you push this little, you push this little button on the end and pop the lids off one section at a time and then pour out. The one thing that's a little cumbersome is you see that little hole that's there? You can kind of get diamonds stuck in that hole sometimes when you're pouring, but it's easily resolved. Just put your thumb over it, you know, when you're tilting them. These are great. They're heavy duty. They're, they're durable. They're sturdy. You can drop these on the floor, bang them against the wall, and you're not going to lose your drills. They don't come open easy at all. So I did snag three more of those while they were on sale because I did need some uh, a couple weeks ago and I ended up having to go pay, pay full price. And I was not happy about that at all. So let me just get these out of the way and put them on my shelf with my storage containers. Just so we have room to get everything else that's in this box. So 
So um, I also had to buy, um, in doing that uh, new blanket, I did not have an eight millimeter crochet hook. So I went ahead and just bought this set of four new crochet hooks. Oh look, it came with like a little keychain with little mini crochet hooks. Wasn't that cute for what, crochet on the go? It's like you got a five millimeter, a three and a four on these, but they're just teeny. And then it came with, it said it was supposed to come with more than this. It said it was supposed to come with like a felt case. Oh no, that's the other ones I ordered. Sorry, I ordered some even larger ones than this. So we've got a 10, a nine, an eight, and a six and a half. So six and a half is a frequently used size that I um, use a lot. So that'll come in handy. But what I really needed it for was the eight. And I might do something with the 10, we'll see. Um, I'm actually trying another new craft and I'm gonna show you guys that once I, I, I practiced on it last night. I ran out of yarn, I need more yarn for it. Um, but I'm trying arm knitting and it's, it really turned out looking really good. I'm really, um, well, I can't say it turned out looking good. It, uh, I, I would show you, but I already frogged it and took it all apart. Um, but I ended up skipping a few stitches and so I had some, it was a mess. I have to redo it. Anyway, I ran on the yard anyways. I ordered some more today, so that should be in. I could have just driven right back out to Hobby Lobby and gotten more. But it was free delivery, and I was like, it's 25 minutes for me to drive out there. I didn't feel like going out, so I just ordered it online. I'm being lazy. Um, I also ordered, you know, I told you guys uh, a while back in a video um, that I had ordered a pen, a resin pen from Amazon. And um, I really liked it. And so I saw another one on there. This was $5.67. It's a blue swirl, blue, clear with blue, blue swirl. Now it does come with the thick multi-placers, which I do not like. So I will take these out and replace it with the thin multi-placers, which it's easy enough to do. And if they don't sit tight enough in there, you can just wrap washi tape or even masking tape around, around the post before you stick it in. So that's no big deal. But this one is a little bit different. It's a little bit, this end is a little bit thinner. And I'm finding that I prefer the thinner pens um, to the super super bulky. So I thought I'd give this one a try and for five bucks and some changed I, th I thought I'd see if it was um, See if it's really worth it and see how much use I could get on it out of it my seven dollar one that I um, Purchased I've been working with that for quite some time and it's been holding up really nicely. Okay, we're gonna get to the first new craft My first new craft that I'm working with are wood puzzles now these two particular wood puzzles that I ordered are from the um, brand called Wood Trick. There is also a brand called Roker or R-O-K-R or Row Life. Um, and that's also a really good brand that I've worked with. But these are two kits that I got that are from Wood Trick. I do have another Wood Trick brand kit. It's actually, it's a hurdy-gurdy. If you don't know what a hurdy-gurdy is, Google it. It's a musical instrument. And when I'm finished with this musical instrument, it's actually going to play. Actually, you know what? Hold on a second. Just take a look at these two that I got. I'm going to run out there and grab it because um, it's coming along really nicely. It'll just take me a second. Hold on. Okay, now, yes, I realize I could have paused you and that probably would have been the nicer thing to do, right? But I didn't do that. I just acted like you were right here with me and told you, hold on a second. So here's the hurdy-gurdy and how that's coming together. And what you do is, and it's gonna be beautiful and it's actually gonna be functional when it's finished. Um, you can tell I've got the mechanisms in here already that are gonna, the gears are in there and the flywheel that's going to the string for the instrument is going to rest on that. And when you push the buttons, it's going to play with the music. So the way this comes, the way these um, kits come, they come in sheets of wood that are pre-scored and you just have to kind of knock them out. Some of them are a little tough to get out of there. Um, and then you get a little bit of sandpaper so you can sand the notches off the edges. And then some of the parts, like if they're moving mechanism parts, 
You do have to wax them. It does come with wax. So you just punch out your parts and they're all very, very accurately labeled. Um, and they're labeled not only on the template, but they're also labeled on the part itself. Well, some of them are, which makes it nice. Um, like right here when I was doing this part where it says R1 and L1. So those were labeled on the P and X and Y. So it was really important that those go in the correct direction on the right side. So um, it was very helpful to have the printing be on the piece themselves. And that's gonna all get hidden by the over, the cover that goes over it. So it's not anything you're gonna see in the finished product. And the thing that I liked about the Wood Trick brand, more so than the kit that I did from Roker, um, was this is a lot more um, decorative. It seems like they're kind of focusing a little bit on the aesthetic value as well as the functionality. And I did like that about this. So the directions have been really easy to follow um, for this kit. They're not, um, they are not written directions as much as they are pictorial directions which as long as you pay very close attention to each step and you go in the order that they're telling you to do it and you pay attention to the direction that everything is facing, you are golden. You, you know, you're not going to have a problem. I have not had any problems so far. These kits are a little on the pricey side. The hurdy-gurdy kit was, was pretty pricey. Um, the two that I got today that I'm going to show you in just a second as soon as I move this out of the way. Um, the Hurdy Gurdy kit I think was $70 or close to it. The two, tri the two kits that I got today were each almost $50. So not quite as expensive but still pretty expensive for a new hobby. Um, so that might not be something if you're on a budget, it might not be a hobby that you want to jump into. It's a little difficult to get started, but it is something that requires like, I don't have any skill or talent in that. And um, I was able to just pick it up and with the directions, I was able to, um, I was able to figure it out. So this is the first one, it's called a mystery box. Isn't that pretty? And what it is, is there are gear mechanisms. You can kind of see them right in here and on the side there's a turn thing and what happens is oh, I wish it showed the picture of it on there because it's really beautiful what happens this flower when you turn this gear mechanism spreads open and it reveals inside like a storage box so I was thinking this would be really really nice to use as a gift box so if you wanted to give somebody a gift, you know, that was smaller, you could put the gift inside that box and then they would have this little puzzle um, that they twist it and, and, and the flower just opens up. And it, oh, I've watched the video. Uh, go on Amazon and, or even just on Google and put in Wood Trick um, and look up Mystery Flower and um, take a look at the video. It's really pretty. It's really, really cool. Or actually, look, there's a QR if you want to scan that. QR right there, it will take you right to the video. So there, there's that. Look at me just being all informational. Okay, the other one that I got, this one I'm really, oh, this is heavy. They're both pretty heavy. But this is an actual functioning uh, clock. Now, I, under, I, I understand that this part the clock mechanism isn't something that I'm going to be actually building you're basically just building the clock cabinet um, but you know what you can actually also paint or stain this wood the finished product that they're showing on the box is just for the raw wood finish but you I've seen that um, you can paint or stain it and they look really nice now you can't see it in this diagram but there's a drawer right here that pulls out that you could actually put like rings or watches or jewelry or something like that in there and I just thought this was really pretty and I thought I like putting these things together. I like working with them. They're fun. I've always loved puzzles. And this is like a three-dimensional puzzle that has like a utilitarian purpose or maybe not utilitarian. Well, a clock does have a utilitarian purpose, I guess. 
But, um, you know, it's something that's going to have a job to do after you're done with it and also sit there and look pretty. So I was really excited to get these two things. And they have a wide line of different puzzles. They have everything from trains to clocks to windmills to cranes to Ferris wheels. Um, they, there's just no end. They actually have like a grandfather clock, a pen, uh, like a pendulum clock that actually functions, the clock mechanism functions um, based on wood gears that you put together in the clock. I wanted to get that one, but the reviews for that one um, were not so great and it only kept time for 12 hours at a time. So you had to essentially wind it up and then the pendulum would keep it swinging for, um, for nine or 12 hours at a time. Well, I'm sorry, my daughter's calling there. There, I'm sorry, I had to touch that and stop the phone from ringing. But that's that one, the vintage clock. So very cool. I'm really excited to start these, but I promised Nate I would finish his hurdy-gurdy. Um, so I'm gonna work on the hurdy-gurdy before I finish, or before I start on either of those. If you guys are interested in seeing me work on these, I would definitely be open to doing just a whip and chat um, while I work on them and you can see how the parts fit together. It's a little bit, uh, they go together a little bit difficult in places, but that's a good thing because that means that they're not going to come undone. You know what I mean? They're going to, they're going to stay together nicely. So let me just stick these on the shelf with my new stuff. Then the last thing we have in this big, big box is probably the thing I'm most excited about. This is a totally new craft to me. I saw some videos um, <clears throat> and of people doing it, and I, there, let me adjust that camera and get you guys down here so you can see me open it. Um, I've seen some videos and I've seen some pictures and I've seen some posts on some of the crafting Facebook groups that I'm a part of. And it, um, it looked beautiful. The end result was absolutely beautiful. And I was fascinated. So I took a little bit extra closer look at, the, at it. And I thought, you know what? With my miniatures and the fun that I'm having doing all the paper folding and that um, in working with the miniatures, this is something I could probably do. So what am I going to try to do? I am going to try paper quilling. What do you guys think? Have you ever heard of paper quilling? Now this is an affordable hobby. This is something that you can get into for under $20 and have all the supplies that you need to get started. There are plenty of YouTube videos out there. I was watching YouTube videos last night of um, uh, people showing demonstrations on how to do the quilling. And paper quilling essentially is the art of rolling and bending paper and then putting it on a, on a paper, you know, a, a flat piece of paper and you end up with these beautiful designs. So that's all made with rolled strips of paper, rolled and folded strips of paper. Isn't that cool? Yeah, it is cool. I'm very excited about it. So this, I, what I ended, what I did is I went and I tried to find the most all-inclusive kit that I could find. Now, like I said, you could get into it for less than $20 and have everything you need. Um, I chose a kit that had a case with it, that um, had a, a big supply of paper. So I did pay a little bit more. I think this kit that I ordered was $36.97. But I thought that it was going to be worth it to have it in the case so I could keep everything all together. And then I decided to get a book. Um, so I went in I, on Amazon and I looked at a lot of the quilling books that they had. And this is the one that I chose. Uh, this is by Sina Runa. It's called Quilling Art. And it has pictures and basics and it also has projects in it. Um, so you, you know, it gives you some projects to start with and what tools and materials you need and the directions for doing each of the projects. So very cool. I'm so super excited. So let's just take a look at our kit and what we got. This is actually bigger than I thought it was going to be. So I'm happy with that already. Let's see what we've got in here. So it came with this instructional guide, which is in English, which is always helpful. Um, so it talks to you about the different tools. It tells you what a curling coach is. It tells you what a template board is. 
a quilling knitting board, a quilling comb. I don't know what any of this shit means, you guys. So um, we'll find out. Um, tells you about your slotted tools, your tweezers, your glue bottle. Because it doesn't have glue in it, but the glue bottle has a really uh, teeny, teeny end, precision end. So you have to put your own glue in it, which, you know, I have plenty of glue. So that's not a, that's not a problem at all. Um, and different, and it just talks about all the different components. So cool. So let's get in here and see what all we have. Now, I'm not going to... I can show you this stuff, but I don't know what the hell it does. I mean, this is my first time seeing it, right? So um, I think what I'm going to do is uh, I showed you guys, I'm going to show you this unboxing. And I think what I might do is just hold off on uploading this uh, video and then um, do a little session with me trying this out for the first time. You know what, actually, no, I'm not gonna do that. I'll put this up and then I'll do a session with me trying this out for the first time and then maybe working on one of the wood puzzles uh, for the first time as well and so you can just see what that's all about. So let's get right into it and see what comes in this kit. Looks like we have some wire, like it's like, uh, wire that you would use for like making flower arrangements so I would assume that this is what you're going to use like for to make your borders uh for your of your shapes for your pictures we've got a pair of tweezers and probably tweezers that you've got that can have come with some of your diamond painting sets are nicer than these tweezers but nonetheless we've got some tweezers they are bent at the end so I don't know if that makes a difference ring of pins. I don't know what in the world you use those for, but we'll find out. A pair of scissors that do have a um, a ruler on the scissors. I don't know. They don't seem super high quality, but you know, whatever. Um, these are guides for um, bending. So you've got these three towers in different shapes. Square, round and triangular so these can help you to bend the paper into shape and it comes you know the staggered is whatever size you want to bend to i'm assuming here's our glue bottle and this is what i was telling you about having the really uh teeny precision tip on there so we'll just fill that up with some glue and i'll definitely use this because the glue bottles i have even for making my miniatures the opening on it is too big sometimes. So this is this is gonna be nice to have. This I'm actually more excited about this than I probably should be. And then we got our paper. So the, I chose this kit because it came with the most amount of paper. So we've got everything in the red family and everything in the yellow and orange family that comes here. Now, I did notice in the description of this, the papers come in different widths and um I also was reading that in these kits they come in millimeter widths um but in some of the books that have been written they are in standard English widths like quarter inch half inch kind of uh, measurements so we might have to adapt some of the instructions to accommodate that so we've got the orange and the red families and we've got black, gray, and purple uh, family, brown and beige, green family. So I chose that's why I chose this kit because it had the most variety of paper. Um, we've got the blues, so that. And we've got a rainbow pack, and this is a little bit wider. I wish it told me on here how wide this stuff was. I'll have to go back to my product description and look and see um, how wide it is. Oh, we still got more, more colors. And these look to be maybe a little bit thinner even. We've got the same color rainbow. Maybe these are a little bit thinner. Let me see if I can tell. I can't really tell. Yeah, maybe. What do you guys think? Do those look thinner? Does one set look thinner than the other? I don't know. 
I don't know. We'll figure it out. So we've got a couple of these rainbow packs. Oh, yeah, like this one's definitely thicker than this one. Yeah, these are three different widths of rainbow pack of quilling paper. So this came with a lot of paper. Oh, I was reading about this. This is an, uh, an electric quilling uh, pen. I don't know that I'll ever use it. Um, it's battery operated. Here are your actual um, uh, curling tools. Uh, these are what you use. What you end up doing is you take this curling tool and it has a slot in it. I don't know if you can see that there's a slot in the end of that. So you take and you stick your little strip of paper into that slot and then you curl it. You hold it like this and you curl it, curl that piece of paper up. And that's how you make your shapes and stuff. And yeah, we'll get, I, I'll do a little, I'll do a little whip and chat while I'm working on this. This is a crimper. So you put your paper in there and turn this thing and it crimps the paper if you wanted to make crimpy paper. Um, this is a curling coach. So it helps you to, if you're new to it, to make your curls. This is a template. So you have different size. So after you've curled your paper, then you put it in this template and get it to expand to whatever size circle you want it to be. Then take it out of there and glue the ends. Um, and then it has different shapes. So there's that. I don't know what, ooh, what's in there? I don't know, something's in there. I don't know what the hell this is. What does it say is? It's a quilling cutting board. Oh, I see. It says right there. It can help you wrap strips of paper over pins. So you stick pins in here and make a shape and then you wrap the paper around the pins to make that shape and it folds it that way. Okay, so that's interesting. And then we've got some plastic buttons. Looks like they have adhesive backs, probably to make like setters of flowers, I don't know. I have no idea what this is, some kind of a mold. No idea, what is this? Let's say what this is. Oh, it's for making a half ball. Oh, so you can make like a flower pot. So you use it this way and you wrap the paper around and um, you can make like a, make a pot or a bowl or something. Okay. I don't know what this is. This is your actual quilling comb. This is what is used to make um, special shapes. Like if you wanted to make that guy right there, that guy right there, you take the paper and you um, use these different rings, which are all numbered, and you put the paper, you wrap the paper according to the directions um, around alternating tongs, prongs, and then it folds it to that. Boy, this seems a lot more involved than I thought it was going to. Uh, quilling ruler, so you can see what size your circles are going to end up if you want it, if you're following a pattern and doing an exact project. I probably will do some freehand stuff to begin with, I think. Then you've got a cutting mat. Oh good, I didn't know I was gonna get a cutting mat. That's nice and uh, a ruler in there and a concentric circle measurer thingy do. All right, all right, nice. And then it looks like we have, oh, it looks like they've given us some um, bases for making projects, nice. So it does give you some starter projects. So you would, what you would do is, um, Oh, and it has instructions on there for how to achieve it and what paper you need and what shapes you need out of those paper. Now, of course, this is not in English. This is in uh, probably Chinese, um, but it does have pictures. So you can easily um, 
you can easily probably figure out pictorially as long as you know how to make those shapes um, and you can follow that that pattern so that's what that is going to look like that cute little girl with a dress on so that's cool that they give you these uh, these um, what's the word I'm looking for templates for starting out that's nice so you've got some projects to start out with to work on very cool I will use those oh I like that that's probably the one I'll start with because that seems pretty basic you just got teardrops and circles and from the videos I've watched that's going to be your easiest shapes to make so that's probably the one I'll start with crab some birds oh this one's nice just flowers now you don't have to um, use a template or anything like that. You could just use a blank piece of cardstock as your base and then just um, make the shapes with your, with your actual quilled paper and, and glue them on there. So you don't have to use a template like this, but it's kind of cool that they did give you those templates to start with. I kind of like that idea because um, I'm not the most creative person in the world, so it'll give me a good basis to start out. So what do you guys think? I don't know if I can do it. I honestly, I am feeling with all of this stuff here, I have to admit, I feel a bit overwhelmed by all of this. Um, this is definitely not going to be something I can see I can, that I'm going to be able to do at my lap desk sitting in my recliner. This is going to be something that's going to have to be done at a table um, at, with a large work surface. So if that's not something that you have access to, this might not be the craft for you. Um, but we're going to give it a shot. You know, why not? I'm the craft NATO after all, and this is what I do. I... I want to try all the crafts. So if uh, if I don't like it, you know, at least I can say I tried, right? Right. So that is the end of my little haul for today of my new crafting projects. What do you guys think? Do you think I have what it takes to actually do this? I don't know. I feel very confident about the wood uh, puzzles. Those I am very confident about because I have worked on them in the past and I've really enjoyed it. Um, this is, this seems a little bit daunting. This seems like it's gonna be something I'm gonna have to really be in the mood for and I'm gonna really have to have some concentration and be ready to spend some time doing it. Do any of you guys do paper quilling? Um, if so, how do you like it? How was it when you first started? Was it really difficult to get started for the first time? It was something that you could pick up pretty easily. Does it require a lot of skill? Um, I'd be really interested to know um, if anybody, if any of you have any experience with paper quilling and what you think of it. Um, and I'd love to see if you could put pictures, anything that you've done. That would be really interesting too. So uh, I appreciate you guys hanging out with me while I do something a little bit different again than diamond painting, but I never said I was going to only do diamond painting, right, right. But keep on the lookout. I've got a couple of new releases from Diamond Art Club coming on Thursday, so I will be posting uh, those unboxings, and I've got some other stuff coming who knows when, but it'll be here when it gets here, right? So, oh, actually, I do have another. I think I have my Mystical Diamond Arts order is coming on Thursday as well. So, and I do have some other orders outstanding, like always. So when they get here, you'll see them. You'll be the first to see them because um, when I get new packages, I can't wait to open them. I've got to open them right away, right that minute. These were on the doorstep when we got home from the dentist's office, and I brought them in and cleaned off my crafting table, and here we are. So I wanted to get right to it. I didn't want to delay a minute. So, um, again, if you haven't subscribed to my channel, please consider subscribing. Um, I do have mostly, I would say it's mostly diamond painting content, um, but I do do a lot of uh, other various crafts. And I would love to have you as part of my channel. So I will, if you have any questions, I don't know crap about what paper quilling, so don't ask me questions about that. But if you have any other questions that I might know the answer to, uh, leave it down in the comments. Or if you have any other, um, if you have any nuggets of wisdom for me or any advice, 
I would welcome that too. I would definitely welcome any advice or um, if you have, if you know of any resources that would be good for a beginner, uh, specific maybe YouTube creators I should watch or um, uh, content that you know that's out there that you think would be helpful. I'd be really happy to hear about that too. So um, that's all I got. I am going to go get my dinner. I just heard my husband walk in the door. We're having the always delicious McDonald's for dinner because our kitchen is still torn up. Um, so that is what I'm going to do. I'm going to go get my McDonald's while it's hot and tasty and delicious. Mmm, yum, right? Right. All right, guys, I'm going to let you go. I'll see y'all later. Bye.